Hello, welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we're looking at another small block, large vehicle, where this has once again got a bunch of moving parts on there, and while well, it is a lot of fun to play with in creative mode, especially with block destruction turned off, and while well, it is possible to use in far mode if you want to actually spawn it in or use a modded projector, but no, this thing is called the Heavy Excavator, which is this lovely thing sitting right behind me. So this is a gigantic work vehicle that comes with detachable heads, which conveniently got a bunch of other heads on a trailer right behind it. So if you do want to use the claw right there, you have a bunch of different options right over here from connectors, ejectors, drill heads, grinders, and welders. So yes, I'm not going to go through all of them, I'm not going to even try and attach all of them. When I actually come to detaching it and attaching these on, I'm only going to choose one of them, whichever is closest, to actually go pick up and demonstrate, because no, they're all very self-explanatory with what they do. But I think a demonstration is in order, so what I'm going to do now is grab hold my character, come up into this doorway right up here, here we go, open that up, get inside, and I've got a few controls to go through. So pressing number one, and of course you can see up there, there's some very handy controls up there to control this arm, because it is very, very confusing, and even when you're sort of familiar with the controls, it's still a bit odd with how they've been set up, but no. What I'm going to do now is press number one, I'm going to press number three, and now I've got full control over the arm, with the free camera once again, Looking at like so, I'll come around with the side that has the sunlight on it. There we are. Now what I'm going to do is move this up by moving the mouse up. So here we go, go down and then go up. And then I'm going to use the keyboard W to lift it up. And then S to bend it down. I can then press space to spin it one way or I can press C to spin it the opposite. Then of course to open up the grippy claws and of course to control all the stuff with the other heads, we press number four, which is the battery symbol for whatever reason. Now open up and as you grip hold the stuff. Come back into this view and are you properly controlling it? So we're gonna go all the way out and down. I'm gonna try and grab hold the good old Dex fighter. So opening up this, trying to get a bit closer. Like I said, it is a little bit wonky. It's very odd control. That looks like I am very, very close. We've got a handy camera on the end there so I can sort of tilt this around, get it where I need it to go. So I'm gonna lift this all the way up, come down a bit more. And all the way down. So yes, this is very, very confusing to do. That looks just about good enough. Press number four. Can I grip onto it? No, I cannot. So it's take a little bit of time to do. We kind of get the idea. And I'll come back to that a bit later on. Yes, in the third person view and actually relaying this. I suppose I will do this from a third person view so you can see exactly what's going on with the arms. Like I said, it is very confusing with how this thing controls. So we go all the way across. Down a bit more. Up a bit more if I can. And I'll just go and snatch onto it like so. And well, that'll be how you attach onto it. But yes, that's basically how it works. That was a terrible demonstration. And well, I should have probably chosen something easier to grab hold of. But no, it gets the job done. And that's how it works. But anyway, I'm going to press F10. Find it in support menu. Go through here. Then we'll go through the rest of the controls. Go around the outside. Then go detach the head. And attach on a separate one on the trailer before driving it around. So the Heavy Excavator, and there is his name up there. It's a modless, scriptless vehicle. That's a nice lot of information about it. We see all the way down to here is features and whatnot. And all the way down to the very bottom, we do have all the controls. So you do have a brief look at what's going on with the hot bar before you even get into the vehicle. And of course, the controls for the arms are on that handy little LCD screen. But as you saw from me, well, it doesn't really help too much if you keep getting confused or muddled up with the controls. Anyway, giving this thing a thumbs up. We're going to move around towards the very front. Have a look around the outside. And like I said, we're going to go play around for it a bit more. I'm not too sure where to actually start with the very front of this thing. I suppose we'll come up to here with the cockpit is sitting, and we'll work our way up the arm. So yes, for the very front of the heavy excavator, this is what we get. Where as you can see, we've got a bunch of light grey, dark grey steel blocks, some of the plain steel skin, some of the corrugated steel skin, and we've got some lights and a connector and the front. This connector right here is connected up to a bunch of medium cargo containers that will connect up to a bunch of modular cargo containers on the side. We'll actually see that when we go around onto the sides. Then getting a bit closer over here in the round, we see our wheel suspensions, how they've been connected up. Then across here, a bunch of beam launches going along, acting as a little mud guard, or at least a place you can stand on, and we'll get up into the cockpit. Down and through here. There we are, we've got an ore detector, remote control block, over there, an atmospheric thrust to help the sisters move around. And across there, there's a car containers, below here. And there we are. Then move up onto this section, ignoring the arm for the moment. Because we see a bunch of window blocks just in a very square shape, which is how we're going to get inside to our little cab to actually control this thing and to spin it all the way around. And of course, get to the trailer and connect it up a new head. 
Bring the camera all the way through. There's the little control seeds. Then behind there, we've got an air vent so we can drive this around on an oxygenless planet. Moving across onto the side. There we are, so we've got our wheels. Onto this section, here's the start of our modular containers with an access panel on each side. Up here's the doorway to get up and inside with a fake handle made out of a neon tube in a black colouring just on this side right here. We've also got an angle of floodlights. Over here is a little label for the company that created this thing. And all the way across, there's a ladder to be able to hop up and go on top of this thing to do some maintenance work if you need to do that. Come around and ignoring the trailer. There we go, there's the name of the vehicle. There's another connector. That's how the trailer has been connected up. It's got two hinges. One that moves left and right, one that moves up and down. Then through here we see all of our containers and of course our atmospheric thrusters that we saw on the very front. Push the camera all the way through. There we are, so we've got a wheel right there. That looks like a sensor block. And this is going to be the part that spins all the way around to have this top section to do a 4360 to reach a trailer at the back. Let me put away from this onto this side. Ladder once again. This time, instead of having a little cab, we actually get inside and drive it around. We seem to have a flat section made out of some black steel blocks. Then coming all the way over to the arm, looking at the front here, and well, here we go. So we've got blaster edge blocks that come onto a hinge. We've got one massive hinge in the middle to come onto some yellow blocks. That moves all the way up to here. We've got a piston. We've got another hinge around that section. All the way across to here, there's our camera to actually help aim our head. And then all the way around, that eventually comes all the way down over to here. We've got a conveyor. And onto this section, we've got even more hinges. Yes, this is just an absolute mess, which I do not quite understand how this is even functioning. No, we've got small hinges that come all the way up to some rotors. Up to here, they've got a rotor that comes across onto a piston, onto another piston, onto this yellow section, and then has another hinge down onto some more small pistons, down onto another small hinge. They see it right down there, connects onto this main thick part in the middle. Then as for this thick part, we see we've got a bunch of conveyors linking it all together, large hinge in the middle, that comes all the way down onto a rotor to spin this thing full 360, so we can precisely aim the claw. Then we've got two more hinges to actually open up this claw, which is unique to this one head. The other heads have slightly different designs, so that's how we're going to be opening and closing this one. Moving all the way down underneath this thing. There we go. It's got a battery in the middle. That's how claws have been set up. See, it's with block destruction turned off. This could be a bit of an issue if you are quite reckless with it. It's going to be much like the previous video where you have that giant clamping ship where you'd be very easy to blow stuff up or even damage the head if you're being too impatient or just have the wrong settings in general. But no, moving all the way up. Past this section. Yes, that's the part which is quite scary to look at. Comes all the way up, and of course down and around. Looking at it as a whole, there we are. Then behind it, that just comes all the way up, hinge in the middle. There's all of our columns onto our pistons once again. Anyway, on the very top of the back section, we've then got two solar panels for some renewable power. Then we've got a button right there, which I can grab on my character, come up and press. And what's going to happen is, there we go. So yes, the solar panels can lift all the way up, revealing to us the internals of this vehicle. So if you ever took damage for whatever reason, and well, don't know why the solar panels would be up when you're taking damage, but no, we get on top of here and actually just start to weld stuff up. There we go, so we start welding up the tanks, batteries, containers, and of course all the other stuff going on inside here. So there's the O2 HU generator, auction tanks, and then for the opposite side, it's basically the same. They're a very handy little thing to have, you never know what you might need it, and it's also a fun little part to roleplay with if you are doing some maintenance work you're waiting for this vehicle to be unloaded of all the goods inside it. Anyway, back with the free camera, and I suppose we'll come down underneath this thing. Here we go. See, so we can very clearly see all of our medium cargo containers, how wheels have been set up. Below the cargo containers is a bunch of barred windows for some extra protection. Then over there, we've got an abstract thruster just to help it when it gets very, very heavy. Across here, we've got some black corrugated armored panels, once again covering up all of our important internals, but this time it's our modular cargo containers, we just about make them out on the side right there. Towards the front, more medium cargo containers. There's our front connector. And there we are with the front of this thing. Moving over to the trailer, across to here, well, we've got some steel blocks come all the way across from our hinges. That just attaches onto the trailer with some columns with a little wheel. So when we detach this, it'll then drop down onto the ground and be sort of level and easy to connect up. Anyway, this is made out of a bunch of armored panels. Once again, our barred windows make a return and this little fencing all the way around this thing. All the way down and across, there's our wheels. Towards the back, there we are, then onto this side, moving up, and there we go. That's for the heads. Over here is our little magnetic plate to, well, pick up wreckages and move it to one place if you need to. Say you've got a grinding pit and just want to move a couple of drones that you shot down into that, this would be absolutely perfect. Over here is then your ejector. So say you use this right behind here, the drilling head, 
and collected up a bunch of ice, a bunch of stone, whatever resources you want to collect. You can now just reach out the heads for this one and then drop it all off into a collection pit to load up into your base or another ship. Anyway, this one is just a generic connector setup, so we just use this to connect up to another ship. So, much like the drill head, much like the ejector right next to us, you can say collect up a bunch of ice from ice fields, and then connect this head and then drop it off into a ship so we can then process it with the O2H2 generators and recharge up its hydrogen tanks. And then last but not least, we then got our welder, we got our grinding heads, very good for, say, repairing up a base, repairing up a ship, or just dismantling wreckages or a base from a distance. And there we are. On the top of all of them is, of course, your rotor heads to connect it up, which is how we're going to be, well, dropping off that one and moving around and connecting it up to this one. It'll snap in place. You've got to be a little bit careful because it is manually plated down onto the trailer, so the trailer will lift up if you're in a dodgy position. We'll see that in just a moment. But no, that's the trailer. That's the vehicle itself. That's what it can do. And from a distance, that's what it looks like. So grab hold my character, it's now time to come up into this. Here we come all the way up, onto the inside, get into the seats, bring up this, remote control is, press number 9, close up the door, we're now nice and airtight on the inside here. And yes, looking up to there, we've got our arm controls, over there it's our very useful controls, down here, standard stuff, all the way around, and there we go. But yes, as for controls, we're going to start off with number 9, which is the door we just saw to open and close it. Then you've got number 7 and number 8, which is going to be to attach and detach the head. We won't do that just yet. Number 5 and number 6 are not blocks currently available on this vehicle. They have to do with the heads on the trailer. So when we say connect up to the welder, when we say connect up to the ejector magnet in place, these will then light up as you use them. And number 4 is to open and close the head, and of course to activate the other heads on the trailer. We're going to skip across to number 2, because that's going to be your camera for an your head to precisely aim it and make sure it's going where it needs to go. Then number one and number three are two controls that you handle together, which gonna to be to take over the arm. And number three is gonna to be to actually control the arm to lift it up and down. It's like a safety lock. So if you press number three, you now no longer control the arm. So yes, in the first pass view, actually making it go all the way across to that. So we're gonna pull this down, move this across, put that way across like so. And then we can press number four to open it up, bring this down a little bit more. Like I said, despite having the instructions right next to you, it is very difficult to control because a lot of these different piston system arms tend to use, say, like Q and E and all that to actually move it around. But no, this is quite confusing with how it's been set up. But no, I am determined to actually connect up to that, so we're going to do that. Undo the parking brake. Move a bit closer forwards. There we are, that'll do quite nicely. We bumped into it. We now connect to that. Move down. Pull this up a little bit. Down a bit more, spin this around, and now I simply need to drop this down just a little bit. That actually looks quite perfect. Pressing number four, gripping onto it, and of course we won't actually grip onto it because it's a large ship, and we just ping away. But no, that's how you connect up the stuff with that head. With that, what I'm going to do now is open up this, tilt it all the way down, move it around like so, and press number eight to disconnect it, and that's going to drop down onto the ground. And with that, I now press A on the keyboard, spin this towards the trailer. You've got to be a little bit careful though, because this does have quite a lot of follow through. So I've let go of the keyboard and it's still moving. We want to spin this around to the trailer. I'm just going to stay in first person view for the moment. Come to a stop here. And now it's time to connect up one of these heads. I'm not going to choose one specific one. I'm just going to drop this down. Hopefully we'll connect up to something as I move close. There we are, moving that across. A bit more. Down a bit. Pressing number seven, and it don't look like, well, it doesn't look like I'm very close to that. Going like this, a bit more, pulling it back, pressing number seven. Is that going to work now? No, it's not. And there we go. That's now connected up. I can press very carefully now, number five and number six. Make sure it does not connect up to the trailer. So when I lift it up, we now pull this thing away, spin this around, and I'll probably go and collect up the Dex Fighter. I'm actually glad I picked up this one. So now my demonstration is going to be complete. So around we go, bit too far there, and then dropping this thing down. So down we come, using the camera, a little bit off but it should not matter, but I'm going to press number 6 once again, and I'm going to do that, and I come if I can, if I can remember what controls are, here we come, I've now locked onto it, I can now pick this thing up, out of that view, and there we are, and now just spin this thing around and properly control it. So now what I'm going to do is lift this up a bit more. There we go. 
and then into a third person view looking at it like so there it is there is the dex fighter now fully attached onto this vehicle and i can just spin this thing around if i want to and then once i'm done i just go and drop it to where it needs to go and there we are and that is basically all this vehicle does and what you can do with it of course like i said i'm not going to go through all the heads it's very self-explanatory what this thing actually does but anyway, it's a lot of fun once you get used to controls which i believe i have done now but it is the mouse movement that is throwing me off quite a lot. It's the left and right moving up and down to actually move it around. And we can still twiddle that around if you want to. But there is that. Okay, so in this view, taking that once again. And just going to pull the arm back so it's in a nice standby position. And you know what? That'll do quite nicely. So yes, hopping out of that third person view, undoing the parking brakes fat. I want to actually spin this around so it's back into its straight position. I'm now going to press number three. There we go. I can have no longer spin this thing around, but instead, I've now got a shot over the wheels. So what's going to happen is, I'm going to drive this thing around to see how it handles. So just pushing that away, that might get damaged. Well, actually, no, it won't get damaged because block destruction is turned off in this world. And here we go, just, well, basically trudging along the desert on the Earth like planets at a pretty steady 20 meters per second with all the heads on the trailer. Or not all the heads, we're missing one, which is just being left behind for the Dex Fighter. In the first person view, there we go. And it is very nice and very smooth. Doing a tight turn. And that is basically to be expected. Because we are on a slight hill. But then we now just tipped over. And I believe we just spilled out everything on that trailer. No I have not. So you just copy this. There we go. And just going to spawn it in like that. Now of course I have left everything on the floor there. That should not matter. I should go back to trying this thing around. Back in here controlling that. And where we go once again. But yes you've got to be very very careful when spinning this thing around on a non-flat surface because as you saw there it's very easy to tip it over because it is quite top heavy at the front there but you can if you really want to try and be a little bit sneaky and say take over this and spin it around to try and counterbalance it that's entirely up to you if you want to do that but as for that that's pretty much it for the heavy excavator it's a fantastic little thing to use in the world if you do want to mess around with a multi-tooled vehicle that's very easy to use and has all the controls clearly labeled in the cockpits once again like i said on the steam workshop page you can use this in safari mode if you want to do that but you will have to use a modded projector to actually spawn it in, or just spawn it in and more deducted materials from your containers. It's up to you with how you want to do that. And while there'll be linked to it's vision below to which you download player on yourself, I highly recommend you do. I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.